I'm here with Dr. Romano to do a problem on electron configuration. Hey, Dr. Romano, you seemed really angry this morning. I was very angry this morning. When I bought this shirt and I got it delivered yesterday, I was so excited that one of my favorite elements in the whole world, molybdenum, was on a shirt. Molybdenum, I love promethium, thorium, I love samarium, and I love antimony. They're my favorite elements that are non-organic. However, when I look closer at this shirt, I want you to take a look at what they did to the configuration. Now, do you notice that the configuration is an S2 and a D4? Yes. I want you to think about that. An S2 and a D4. That is wrong. That is a wrong, wrong electron configuration that the imbeciles who made their shirt and are selling it gave me a wrong shirt. And I'm almost embarrassed to even wear it. Come around and let's have a look. As you can see, you should know that there is a few exceptions when we do electron configuration, and one notable exception is chromium. Chromium has 24 electrons. So if we wrote the configuration out in the Aufbau configuration, we would get 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. Now we would think 4s2, 3d4. But anytime something ends in a d4, almost always the electron previous to it gets promoted, so therefore it becomes a d5. Why a d5? Because a d5 would mean that half of those orbitals are filled up. Half filled is good. It's quite stable. Not as good as a D10, but it's quite stable. Even if I needed to sacrifice an electron from a 4S2 subshell, I was able to promote it into a higher level. That does cost energy, cost money, but the amount of stability I get back is worth it. So if I condense this, this part is the argon configuration and it's 4s1 and 3d5. So you never want to forget that chromium has six unpaired electrons. One in the 4s1, and each of these d orbitals have an unpaired electron. Now, what I want you guys to do is get out a periodic table, and we're going to make a reach. If you go right underneath chromium, you got molybdenum. I'm not saying this is going to work all the time, but it works wonderfully here. Very often, if there's an anomaly in one member of the family, it's often seen in another. Now, molybdenum is 96.52 mo. I'm not going to expect you to write the configuration for 52 electrons, but if you make the reach and you said that if chromium has six unpaired electrons and you had to take a shot, you would have been correct to say molybdenum has six unpaired electrons. When you did the configuration, once again, you would get the krypton configuration, and it would be 5s2, 4d4. Look at my shirt again. What do you see? It says 5s2, 4d4. But what's wrong with that? That that electron from the 5s should have been promoted into the 4d. So therefore, as you can see, chromium, 5s1, 4d5. And that's what the electron configuration would be. Stability would be obtained because the electrons are half filled. So the element molybdenum also has six unpaired electrons. Okay, I hope this helps. And you should remember for the DAT how to at least write the configuration for chromium and notice the anomaly after the 3p comes to 4s. And you should also remember what I say about chromium follows in suit for the element molybdenum. It doesn't work for tungsten, though, underneath molybdenum. So don't get greedy. The first two it works really nice for. Okay, I hope this helps. I'll see you in study group. Good day to you.